Hey guys, Kev here, and I have two packages to unbox. Well, one is a knife, the other is a package. This is from uh, Tinker Force, and they reached out and said, have you seen our tins? And I said, no. And they said, well, let me show you that shit. And I was like, all right. So <laughs> this is one of their little EDC tins, and they actually put Velcro on top, which is pretty damn cool, if you ask me. Never thought of that. And then it has uh, these little organization spots. So you can pop this out, put that in there, pop that, put this here. So you could put little, um, you know, like connectors, stuff like that, um, adapters for things. You could put medications in here if you wanted to, I guess. I don't know if they would, I guess they would stay, right? Um, yeah, you could put all types of stuff in here, I guess. I'm not sure what I will use it for, but maybe hardware could be a good thing for uh, knife hardware. I do have a bunch of patches, so I could go full on, just slap this guy on there in a little mixtape one. That'd be pretty cool, right? Um, I could also, you know, put a bunch of little ones on, like Vero. Um, I have some Blue Creek ones. I have a Knoll Knives one. I do have this bigger uh, Work Sharp, or sorry, Hellback one that's pretty cool. It's like a Samurai. But I think I'm going to go with the uh, mixtape. <sighs> so, pop this guy right in the center there. Bang! Got the mixtape! I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, definitely dig in this tin. I just need to figure out what to use it for. I do think it'd be good for something like bearings. Like, honestly, I keep all my bearings in this bag. You know, that would fit in there. And then I could just keep them all in there instead. But I don't know if they would fit. Let's see. I could do it a couple ways, right? Like, I could take them all out. I could. I could take them all out and put in the different sizes and then have, you know, just pick them out when I need them. I think what I would do is... See how much room I need. Can I fit it all in there? Get this one out. That one out. So you drop the test fit card down there and then stack these in like that. Don't know how well this system would work because they're all going to want to come out, right? As soon as I open it. And I can't even really get it to shut all the way. Now if I did this, turned it. sideways so that half and half so they're not as yeah kind of fits but if I get more then they won't fit you know and then I gotta keep this and hope it doesn't pop open all the time keep it in here which I like I like the idea of this not having to grab a bag every time and I always break this bag and then I have to put you know um, but maybe what I could do is just take the ones I never use. Like, I've never used those. These are five, These are the ones I use the most. 116th, 116th. 5 mil, 116th, 116th. So I got a lot of those. Um, another set. Here's another one I never use. Eighth inch, like really tiny ones. These are occasional. So what I'm going to do is take the ones I rarely use. I have another bag down here. Nope. Um, let me just see. See, I got all these bags of things, and it's annoying. So organizing this would be nice. Here's just random bearings. If anybody out there needs a bag of some random bearings, as usual, hit me up. I usually just fill that up over time, and then whenever... Uh, somebody says they need them i hand them over so there's that one are these the no they're 116 so these are same thing washers i haven't used the washers yet 
uh quarter inch one millimeter haven't used that at all um five millimeter one millimeter it's occasional but not really uh three sixteenth one sixteenth are pretty popular again the washer's just not something i use actually i do want to keep these out um, and then you have five millimeter multi-row have never needed that i wish somebody would do that but just haven't needed it and then we have the um big old multi rows those come in handy very very tiny ones awesome but haven't needed them yet 3 16th 1 16th let's see 3 16th 1 16th i got enough of those these are becoming more popular five millimeter 3 64th um 3 16th 3 64th haven't needed at all and six millimeter oh damn those are some it's like yellow shit. Uh, six millimeter one, 16 count. So I actually did have a few of these. Huh. Um, and then there's some 18 balls. So I got a bunch of those. All right. So let me put these in here. So let's see what that bought us. I just want to be able to shut the damn thing. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go with the least likely to be used at the bottom. And kind of work my way up. That's my plan here. So six millimeter 18 ball don't use those too much three sixteenth one sixteenth they're okay all this stuff is occasional so it's like i got a lot of those i didn't realize that five millimeter one millimeter i'm actually gonna put those in here because i thought those were the three sixty fourths they're not uh quarter inch that's fine and then we'll kind of stack these and then we'll put all the five these are the ones i'm going to use the most um the other thing i would do i think is i'm going to take these on the bottom right um i'm going to put the test card on top because two reasons i think it will push them down and watch i can put this set this way and then this on top will kind of help push it down bang and now they're nice and in there and they're tucked away because of the car perfect and i don't know what else i could fit in here unfortunately i can't like slide these in there to store them um so these are gonna have to just sit somewhere which kind of sucks um but there's nothing you can really do about that right um so then i will take all of these scrunch it down these are the clips and stuff I have. Put these in here. I always squeeze it down so I get all the air out. So I can fit that in the back there. And then what I try to do is squeeze that down. This is like pivots and other hardware kits I might have. And then I try to put these bearings the ones that I kind of fill up with the knives I swap out. I try to put that right near the skiffs. So that way I can just have those. Um, and these, since this is all going in here, I'll just shove these underneath here. There we go. So there's my new setup for my skiffs. So I'll just grab this out, pop it up, grab my card out, and then whatever size I need, right? Usually five millimeter, one sixteenth, and if I have to dig, I just dig in there, no problem. And I can push down to kind of get rid of that pressure, and now it's sealed nice and tight. And that'll go. Should slide right in here, no problems. Just push down a little bit. Yep. Cool. All right. So I got that sorted out, which is nice. So that's the tin. Um, let's check out this knife from CMB. So. This is, I believe, called the Cowabunga. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It looks like that, though. There you go. S35 Sandblast Surface Made in China. Handle V3 CMB. You can use the QR code. Thai plus CF. So let's see what this is. I think this is that crazy Chris knife. Um, they said they would send me one. 
and I am excited. Oh, yeah. Look at that blue, dude. Oh, it's way smaller than expected. Cool. So, really nice cloth. I got to say, that's real, like, plush feeling. Damn, that's cool. Um, so... And then you have the knife. Let's just get this open. Attention, you are buying on knife. Keep the knife away from children. What? Okay. Damn, that is way smaller than I thought. And it has the aluminum uh, CF. Dude, this is a gnarly looking... This is beautiful, first off. Beautiful, dead centered. Yeah, look at that milling on the sides, this step milling. That is crazy. They're calling this a sandblast, or is that the blade? It looks like a double-edged blade. Look at that. It is a frame lock, but as a righty, you would have this. I would probably just reach around it. As a lefty, we'll see. Oh, they hid the lock bar insert. They internally mounted it, or there isn't one. We're going to find out. This is very cool. Nice backspacer. Look at that Chris design. Just zzz, zzz. Now that edge is right there. And I am touching it. But if I do this, I'm not cutting myself. I would have to like jam my finger in. Ooh, that is oiled up. Okay, let's just take a look. Let's see how it looks without the oil. Because right now it looks a little shiny. Not a fan of shiny. This is what they're calling a sandblast. So I don't know what that means compared to like a bead blast. Um, not a fan of bead blasts because they rust easy. This is S35, so it's not M390, which is good. I rust M390. Damn, look at that blade. Steel insert is in there. And is internally mounted. That is freaking sweet. Look at those relief cuts. Look at this clip, dude. This thing is sick. Um, designed by Tiguas. Lock bar access. Wow. Oh, man. Dude, that detent is crispy. Like, it is not... In the slightest week. I mean, it is. Oh, it's perfect, dude. Literally perfect. Look at that action, dude. Holy shit. That's fucking crazy. I am so impressed with this. Look at that. The machining on this is just cool. Oop, that was me. Was it on the lock bar? Sure. Oh, <laughs> I love that pivot. Look at that color on the pivot. And then the aluminum CF. Man. Ergos? Oh, yeah, it works. Um, yeah, I could see myself, like, picking it up the wrong way and going, Arr! but no. I mean, you have a clip and a lock. You can figure it out. Um, interesting. So you want to hold it more like this, probably, or this. You could pinch grip. You could definitely use this thing. Holy shit. I did see Jared's video on this. Uh, I guess he, you know, he got one before I did, so I caught the video. And, um, yeah, I mean, he really liked it. And uh, he was saying you can really use this as a, obviously, you can use it as, like, a claw. So it would be really good for, you know, utility cutting. Like, holy shit, right? Um, now, I don't know about that kind of cut because you're going to be coming out, in and out of cuts, Right? I'm getting caught as I go to that next hump. It's not that it's not sharp there. See? It's just that it catches the angle changes, I guess. Because if I start a cut here... Let me try this again. It's really hard to... Like, it's definitely sharp. It's just a matter of, um, like, if I jam through and just slice, it's, 
I don't know how to explain it. It's hard to explain what I'm feeling. But it's really cool. I mean, I don't think it's good for um, just straight cutting through paper and cardboard and stuff like that because of what I just showed you. But um, if you're going to do this, use this for EDC, are you kidding me? Just zzz, zzz, right through any tape you need. Left-handed works really well. This thing's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I really like this. I really like this knife. I mean, you can't flip the clip or anything, but, I mean, you got to remember, as a lefty, you don't have the frame lock to worry about. So on a front flipper, now you don't have a clip. Like a righty can grab the clip and then use it as leverage. Oh, you can even do the rollback. Um, can use it as leverage to stay off the lock bar and hit the front flipper. As a lefty, you don't have the clip, but you can just wrap around the scale. Once you learn that placement, and you just push the front flipper. I'm sure the reach around would be good too. You just have not much space here because it's the lock bar. This thing's really cool, guys. You just hold it right here. Oh, I'm hitting the lock bar, I guess. Let's see. Damn, is it just that stiff or... What's going on? I must be putting pressure somehow. Because that worked. The D10 is strong on this. There. Because I was off it. Even right here, somehow, I'm on the lock bar. I don't know how. Like, there's no pressure on that lock bar. I just can't get enough leverage. But that's okay. Because I'm most likely going to... I usually do reach-arounds right-handed. Um... And I mostly front flip right-handed, too, honestly. So I'm probably just going to be using this knife mostly right-handed. But left-handed, you know, I can still do the front flipper. Um, Tiguis is a big fan of tactical designs. Um, so you can use your knife in a slurpee-saving situation. And, yeah, this one's pretty good. I mean, you don't have a guard or anything. Um, but, you know, you got that claw. You could do some shit. Um, and the ergos are, they're better this way. So you could, I mean, you know, it's not any shit I'm going to be doing, but maybe one of you guys is crazy. Yeah, this is sweet. Uh, size comparison, just to show you, it's not a big knife. I have my Jack Wolf knives, uh, feel good Jack here. And yeah, I mean, it is not much larger than a feel good jack and then i'm also carrying my emp edc relative which is fantastic and let's see the relative is substantially larger so it's in between these two honestly if we this is dumb i just don't have my uh case here with all my knives i did a live stream last night it's in another room but there you go and then we can take a measuring tape tape <laughs> dumbass um right there we're looking at three man not even three and a quarter just close to three and a quarter on the blade and then on the handle you're looking at four man that's really good blade to handle ratio um, I mean, it's less than an inch. Usually your handle, like just to show you, the, uh, relative here is three, let's see, three, here's three and a quarter. So it's right between three and a quarter and 3.5. So it's probably more like 3.3, 3.4 on the blade. And then your handle is going to be four and a half, maybe a little less than four and a half. So again, usually this is good blade to handle ratio. It looks normal. Everything looks fine. Love this knife. Uh, but it's a little over an inch longer on the handle than the blade, right? And that's pretty normal. Um, you have on the feel good, you have again, here's three and a quarter. So you're at maybe 3.1. And then the handle is going to be, where is it? Back it up a little bit. 
3.37 or 3.75. So again, very good. Um, that one's less than an inch too, but usually you see it at right about an inch. You know, um, the handle is about an inch longer than the blade. Anyway, I'm going to shut up about that. The blade handle ratio is really good on this. Um, what else? It's fucking awesome. That's really, that's my takeaway from this, guys. It's not anything you've seen. Like, it's different. It's a folding Chris, as I understand it. I'm not an expert on uh, all the knife names and shit, but uh, that's what it's called. And the Chris is a Filipino fighting weapon, I believe. And it's, I saw this on the Knife Junkie a while ago. And it, it has that curved design. Um, was it the Knife Junkie? I don't know. It was, um, uh, what's his name? The Cold Steel guy. I met him at Blade West. And he, I think he had one in his pocket. It was like a folding Chris. Um, God damn it. Well, I can't remember his name. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um. But yeah, this thing's really cool. You guys let me know what you think of it. I'm going to do uh, probably a full review on this just because I'm really excited about this. It's just unique, different, and uh, it's exciting. So let me know what you think. I love you guys. Thank you to CMB Knives. I really appreciate you guys sending this my way. Um, I will most likely pass it around after I do the review um, just to kind of thank them for sending it to me. Uh, and I think people should see this, so I will link it down below. I believe it's available at Blade HQ right now. Um, if I can find it anywhere else, like Amazon or something, I'll link that as well. I don't know the price point on it, but S35 and whatnot, I'll figure that out for the review and let you guys know, but very well done, CMB. I love you guys. Uh, hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Oh, and one other thing is I don't even see a Tiguous logo. It must be inside. Yeah, there it is. See, CMB times Tiguous, and then it says S35VN. So all the markings are inside, which is nice. This does not need to be branded. Man, this thing's incredible. All right, I'm going to shut up. Love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.